Hey there, Steve here. Hope you're doing well. By the end of this video, hopefully you'll know the basic technique for two-handed tapping and a couple of exercises that will help you practice them. I know I've done a few videos before on uh, tapping technique, uh, but for this video, I wanna aim it at those that are completely new to the technique, or maybe you've started to look at it and you're looking at for some exercises to practice and ways that you can um, make sure that you're using the correct technique when you're tapping with both hands. As you may be aware of already, uh, tapping is considered an important technique uh, to math rock by many guitarists, as also to the styles of emo that often get lumped in with math rock too. So we'll look at three lovely exercises that I've made, and one exercise we'll look at developing your fretting hand tapping technique, and then the next exercise we'll look at uh, developing your strumming hand tapping technique and then the last exercise will combine the two so we're going to look at a bit of two-handed tapping technique. Uh, before jumping into the exercise there's a quick pointer I want to give you and I'll give you some more as um, we go along with the exercise. The first thing is most important thing that anyway for when you're playing guitar is try and keep this wrist as uh, straight as possible. So you know if you're playing like a power chord here and you get your arms sticking out and you know you're bending your wrist over the top, it's putting a lot of necessary unnecessary sorry strain on your wrist here, right? So after a while it starts to wear on you. So what I like to do is you know bend it round, bring your arm in, tuck it in a little bit, get your thumb underneath, and then here you're getting a much more straighter angle with your wrist. And the same thing for when you're doing your tapping. Try and keep that um, as straight as possible at all times. So the exercise, uh, I ha have the tab up on screen for you. I see a lot of people these days are watching these things on mobile, so I try and get it nice and big so that you can see it um, you know, on a smaller screen. So it starts here on the fifth fret. So I want you to start with your index finger, and then come to your little finger, and then go to your ring finger, here. And jump up to your index finger up here, then your middle finger, then move your ring finger again, then to your little finger, and then lastly, index finger. You can always go backwards too. So, what I did there is a few things. First thing is to think of how you're going to organize the, your fingers, right? So the order you put them in. You know, it's much better to go index to little finger here, right? To your ring finger here, instead of going like, especially when you're gonna speed it up, right? And this is gonna give your little finger and your ring finger, usually the weaker fingers, a lot more practice that way too. Next thing is uh, a tip use the inside of your uh, index finger here as a mute so that really helps you know deaden any you know unwanted sounds so I'll overemphasize you know you're getting a lot of un you know a lot of noise with uh, the taps there which you don't want so if you use this finger here try and mute as best as possible and it make your tapping sound a lot cleaner and the last thing is to try and keep the volumes as even as possible and also the lengths of the note even as possible. And uh, take it slowly, you don't want to be rushing it, and also try and practice along to a metronome. And another thing as well I forgot to mention is try to play uh, in clean first before you start adding any overdrive or anything like that. So let's move on to our strumming hand. So like our fretting hand, we want to be keeping our wrist as straight as possible when we're tapping uh, with our strumming hand, sorry. Ugh, uh, these terms, I eh? um, So, for example, the exercise is this. Well, I'll come back to that in a second. What's important is, if you've got your wrist at this angle, right, it's not, you know, like more of a um, you know, 45 degree angle, it's putting a lot of unwanted pressure here and it'll feel very uncomfortable for you versus if you keep it straight going you know, the same direction as the fretboard 
it feel a lot more loosey-goosey that way compared to putting an unwanted pressure like that. Sometimes, you know, you're going to have to bend it to whatever you're trying to do. The next thing is, um, a lot of the time you can anchor your thumb under here as well, which really helps, you know, keep the balance when you're, um, tapping versus when you're floating it's a little bit more uneven but you will have to do that sometimes but a good practice is to try and anchor your uh, thumb under the neck here you find that really helps and again like the uh, fretting hand you know try and keep notes even and I'll play through the exercise uh, slowly for you here so it's starting um, past the 12th fret on the 15th here on the A string I'll play that um, a little bit slower for you. So again, think about the fingering as you're playing it. You know, you don't want to be playing like something like... So again, you're going to be bending your wrist unnecessarily there, right? So I play like little finger, or pinky, or whatever you want to call it, to the ring finger, to my index finger. Middle finger, index finger, index finger, ring finger, and another pinky. And a tip for pinky, a little old pinky down here, it's not that strong. So what I like to do is combine it with my uh, ring on top, like that a lot of the time. You'll find that adds some uh, strength to it, especially I've got tiny, uh, tiny little fingers as well, which is just not so good uh, for doing this kind of thing. And again, try and keep the volumes even, as I said, and the note lengths even. Uh, last thing I forgot to mention, sorry, with your, uh, when tapping with your strumming hand, use um, your other hand as a mute when you're not playing, right? Much easier, right? But sometimes you're gonna be tapping with this hand too, as you'll see, so then you'll be using this one more of a mute as that, in, in that case. So let's move on to the final exercise where we're gonna look at two hand tapping. So for two hand tapping, you just gotta remember the tips that I gave you about keeping your wrist straight and all the note lengths and stuff and taking your time and making sure each note, each note is even and all this. Um, a general tip I can give you is to master whatever piece that you're going to be playing with uh, two-handing, two-handed tapping for, sorry, if you're learning something or writing something, is to master each part individually. So master the, you know, whatever you're tapping with this hand, for example, the, the exercise we were doing, and then this one. So if I'm proficient at playing that, and I know I can play this, uh, you know, to a solid level, then if I combine the two, then it becomes easier that way than trying to learn, you know, both parts at the same time, because that's two things at once, right, in a way. So that's the way I look at it. And also I look at it like this hand takes care of up to the 11th fret or 12th fret here, and then this hand's taking part of, uh, you know, much like a piano, you know, the lower lower uh, keys here, and then the higher keys here. That's the way I'm thinking of, thinking of it when I'm uh, two-handed tapping. Uh, and when you do combine the uh, two things together, you know, Break it into chunks as well, you'll find this will make it easier. Don't try and play the whole thing at once. You know, this can be note by note, or it could be, you know, bar by bar, depending on the difficulty and your level, of course. So what the final two-handed tapping exercise will be is basically combining the two things that we learned already. So wouldn't that make things much more easier, right? Well, I don't think it does, because I spent ages trying to, to do this uh, the last couple of days. Uh, but I'm going to have to change it up a little bit, so the exercise here is going to change to... It's the same up until here, and then it's going to go... Instead of going... Literally that last note, sorry. The only one note is changing, it's coming down here. That's how that's going to work. And then this exercise... It's going to be the exactly uh, going to be exactly the same, and this basically gives us um, uh, a minor third harmony. So we've got A starting here and C here. So again, remember the ordering of the fingering you want to do. 
take it slowly and go note by note. Mm -hmm. Like that. And remember the next one. So we've got the third again. Sounds nice, right? And then remember, next one. Now then we're going to go up. And then the last one. Sorry. There you go. This is very slowly. Sorry. And yeah, so take your time with that one and you get this lovely uh, third harmony. I say it's uh, actually easier, uh, hard, more difficult, sorry, than doing something where you have to be doing something that's in the interde interdependent on each other, where you're not tapping exactly at the same time. Uh, you know, a classic example of that would be... find that stuff much more easier than trying to actually tap at the exact same time and I'm sure you will if you try it out anyway so um, let me know how this lesson was for you if you are a complete beginner at uh, t tapping anyway and if you already knew tapping but you're looking for some kind of tips and stuff then let me know if it, that was beneficial to you and what else was I gonna say um, I tr like I, I aim this one to try and be very simple, so please let me know if it was still over your head in that manner. And uh, all, all the exercises that you see in this video uh, will be over on my website. I'll throw a link down in the description for you. And um, I should have probably mentioned that earlier, but uh, well, I always forget these things. I've got a million things going on at once, and I'm not particularly that bright, so that doesn't help. But, um, Really appreciate everyone for coming back and watching these lessons. And if you're new, uh, uh, thank you for, and if you're still here, that's amazing. Uh, so uh, thank you for sticking around. If you're looking to support me, uh, you know, like I have a Patreon page and I have some merchandise and I recently got a new logo. I threw that on a t-shirt and I've got mine on the way. So when that gets here, you'll be able to see that. And hopefully it looks uh, very nice. Uh, so as always, um, if you have any questions, then leave them below in the comments and I'll get back to you. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.